Scholar is an online learning platform for learners in Scotland who are studying for National 5, Higher and Advanced Higher qualifications. We offer over 42 courses at these levels and each one has been written by experienced subject teachers so that they complement and support the learning that you're doing in school and so that they align with topics and skills that are outlined by the SQA in their course specifications. You can use Scholar to help you to learn, to practice and to revise what you've been learning and also to test yourself to find out how you're getting on. If you're currently in S4, S5 or S6 and attend a school that has a subscription to Scholar, you will have an account which will give you access to the courses you're studying this year. If you don't know if you have an account, ask a teacher at your school who teaches any of the courses we offer. If you use Glow, you can get into your individual Scholar account by clicking on our tile, which you can search for and add to your launchpad to make it even easier. You don't need a separate username and password for Scholar to access your account this way. If you don't use Glow, you can ask for your login details from a teacher and log in from the Scholar website at scholar.hw.ac.uk. Your username is likely to be your Scottish candidate number. Information is sent to Scholar directly about the courses you're studying and the classes you're in. This means that once you've logged in, you should see a tile for each course you're studying in school which has a matching Scholar course. Sometimes your timetable courses might not completely match your school courses. If a course you're studying in school isn't one of the courses offered by Scholar, there won't be a tile for this. You might also change one of your subjects or the level you're studying it at throughout the year. And it could be that our system is processing this change. This usually takes no longer than a week to update, but ask your teacher to look into it if it doesn't change after that. You can access any course temporarily using the Display Other Courses toggle at the bottom of your homepage, but it is important to access your courses via the tiles as soon as they appear so that your progress and test scores can be saved. You can use Scholar in lots of different ways to help you with your learning, at home and in school. You can use Scholar to go over or to practice something that you've been working on in class but don't feel confident in. Often, a different explanation and more practice can really help to get the hang of something. You might go to Scholar to find information or examples to help you to complete a homework task you're working on. If you've been absent from school, you might use Scholar to catch up on something that you've missed. If you're absent over a longer period of time and learning at home, you could ask your teacher if there are areas of Scholar that it would be good for you to work on. You might complete a Scholar test to see how you're getting on with a topic or a skill and if there's something in particular you need to go back over or do more practice in. You might use Scholar when working on part of a course independently, particularly if you're studying a subject at advanced higher level. For some subjects, such as modern languages, you might use Scholar to get more practice in a specific skill, such as listening. Est-ce que l'environnement et la protection de la planète sont des thèmes importants pour les jeunes français? Scholar is a great resource for practicing or revising for a class assessment, as well as for prelim and SQA exams. Your teacher might ask you to work on something in Scholar for homework, or they might ask you to use Scholar in class, perhaps on an individual device or from the board as part of a whole class activity. All of the courses have been structured so that you can follow them logically by expanding each curriculum area in the left-hand column to reveal a list of topics, the middle column, and then by expanding each topic to reveal a list of pages, the right-hand column. You can work through these pages sequentially from the first page, which explains the learning outcomes for the topic, through to the last page, which is nearly always an end of topic test. This might be a helpful approach if you're practicing 
or revising for a class assessment on a topic or several topics, or if you're working on a topic independently at home. You can also go straight to one particular page within a topic. This could be useful if you've missed a lesson or lessons on one part of a topic and want to catch up, or perhaps if you're looking for something to help you understand and get more practice in something you've been working on in class. If you're looking for something specific within a course, you can use the search this course function at the top of the page. For example, if you've been given a homework activity and you're looking for information or examples to help with it, you could search for related scholar content. This might also be useful if you're preparing for a class assessment and you want to work on something specific that you've been finding tricky or would like to understand it better. For example, imagery in RUAE in Higher English. The Activities button in each course is a useful way to find a particular type of activity within a topic, for example a quiz, an interactive explanation or a video. Selecting this button gives you a list of all the activities in the course sorted by topic. You'll also see a group of filters. And when you choose one of these, the list then shows only that type of activity within each of the topics. So, if you're looking for a video to help you understand velocity time graphs in Nat5 Physics, you can find that quite quickly. Or, you might be looking for some activities to practice listening in higher Spanish, or for an assessment to see how you're getting on with methods of growth in higher business management. You might also find that your teacher has included a link to a scholar page or activity within a homework assignment in a platform such as Satchel One, Google Classroom, MS Teams or Firefly. If you're already logged into Scholar when you click on this link, it will take you straight to the page or activity. If you're not logged into Scholar when you click on it, it will ask you to log in with your Scholar username and password or via Glow before it takes you to the page or activity. A few useful things to know. You can access Scholar through almost all internet browsers on your mobile device, laptop or desktop PC, and it works well on mobile phones too. You can redo everything, including all the practice activities and the assessments, as often as you need to or want to. This is useful as regularly revisiting a topic, for example, helps to commit what you've learned to your long-term memory and to retrieve it more easily when you need to use it. As you're learning, you find out whether you've completed an activity successfully or not straight away. This helps you to know if you've got it or whether you need to have another go or go back over an explanation or a worked example. Sometimes you'll also be given information to help you to be successful in your next attempt. There are lots of tests built into the courses to help you to check how you're getting on with a topic, a group of topics or with a particular skill. In most cases these tests will be at the end of a topic or the end of a curriculum area and in some courses such as modern languages they'll be threaded throughout the topics and contexts. You can also find a test by clicking on the activity button and selecting the assessment activity filter. Almost all of the questions in the tests are marked automatically by the system. Although you may occasionally input an answer, usually where you have to write a longer answer, and a message will appear to say that this will be marked by your teacher. You won't get a mark for this question until your teacher has marked it. You might want to let your teacher know once you've completed a test with one or more of these answers in it. You can go back and try each test as often as you need to or would like to. This means that you could complete one as part of your preparation for a class assessment and then do it again when you're revising for prelims or SQA exams. You might also try a test at the end of a topic, find out that you need to do a little more work on that topic and then redo the test to see if your score has improved. If you do try the same test more than once, the answers and sometimes certain content in the questions will be presented differently. If you're completing a test in a subject where the format of the answer requires you to input a mathematical expression, 
you'll be able to use the Maths Input tool to help. The first time you open this tool, you'll be given a quick tutorial explaining how to use it. Clicking the Reveal button at the end of each question will mark each part of the question as incorrect and will show the correct answers. Be careful not to click this accidentally, as you won't be able to go back and put any answers in afterwards. You can move on to the next question in this case though, and if you redo the test at a later stage, you will be able to answer this question then. When you get to the end of a test, you'll be given a summary of your scores and overall percentage, but you can get much more information by going into the reports area of your account. Here, you can choose one of your courses, and the chart in the centre will show your average score for all the tests you've completed as a percentage. Clicking on View Test Scores and scrolling down the page will give you details for each individual test and can even let you review your answers in a test and compare these with the expected answers. This can be a useful way to identify something you may need to go back over or get more practice in. You can also explore your progress and engagement charts and details here to find out the topics you've been working on and how much you have done each week. Each of our courses also have downloadable PDF study guides, which include all the explanations, examples and activities you'll find in the online version. Once downloaded to a device or PC, you can print these out or view them offline. Your teacher may be able to download a study guide for you. If you're looking for help in how to access or use Scholar, take a look at the video tutorials which you can find within the Knowledge Hub area of our website. If you have any questions about your account or courses, we recommend asking a teacher in the first instance. You can also get in touch with us by using the contact form on our website.